Okay guys, this is going to be a really quick video. Basically, I'm going to show you how to get into the troubleshoot menu on an Xbox One. And you can do this on a working system or a non-working system. Uh, more specifically, if you have a system where you've swapped hard drives out with another Xbox One and you're getting the black screen where you basically can't see anything except for when you hold down the home button, you're able to bring up the shutdown menu. And so what this will basically allow you to do is get in to reset your system when you can't actually get to the menu to reset your system. But the other thing that you could do is use it to perform an offline update, which is most likely what you're going to want to do in this case in both ways. But as you can see here, I have uh, this system here up in the corner of the screen there. I, uh, this system is actually working. So I'm going to show you that you can get into the menu even on a working system. So what we're going to do first is shut down the system here. And we'll wait till we hear the fans go off. Now this can be a little bit tricky, and this is something that is explained by Microsoft on their support pages, uh, specifically their support pages where you're able to download the latest OSU1. And I'll do a video about downloading the OSU1 and putting it on a flash drive as well, and just do it in the same format here of a, a short video. So let's get to it. So this could be a little tricky. I'm going to tell you how to do it, and then I'm going to attempt to do it, and we'll see how, how many attempts it takes me to get it to work. Sometimes I can do it first try. Sometimes it takes more than that. But basically the idea is that, oh, and this works for, this is the older Xbox One, but this work on an S system and an X system as well. So what we're going to do here is hold down the sync and eject buttons at the same time, and then press the power button or attempt to press the power button. This is the trouble I've had, is that the power button won't always turn on. So we'll do that again. So we try to press down both at the same time, sync and eject. Sync and eject. There we go. This actually works a lot better on the S and X models. Now what we did there is we basically held both buttons down and then pressed the power button. So for a second there, we pressed all three buttons. And after it powers on, you want to continue to hold the eject and sync and let go of the power button. So you just hit the power button once to turn it on. And when you hear that beep that it's turning on, then you're good. Okay. And then you'll hear, you will hold down the sync and eject until you hear that beep. And if you don't have an OSU1 USB stick, so an NTFS USB stick in your system, it will boot to the troubleshoot menu. So let's bring this up a little bit here. And just so you guys can see it. So at this point, we have the ability to reset the Xbox. And if you have basically a black screen, you're going to want to perform this step. You're going to want to reset the Xbox. Since you already likely have the update files on the disk itself, if you've swapped the hard drive from another system, that maybe all you need to do is just do a reset and it'll come back. If not, what you'll have to do in addition to a reset, and I don't actually want to reset the, the, the box, but uh, just to show you here, you can keep your games or you can try to remove everything. I would say if you're swapping the drive from one system to another, you should do the remove everything option. The reason being the games and apps probably won't work because when they were installed on the other system, you have the games on the hard drive, but because they weren't installed through that system, they probably won't work. So I'd recommend doing the remove everything. But uh, of course, that's up to you. Now here for the offline system update, let me just show you something really quick. When I plug in a USB flash drive, so I'm going to plug it in on the, uh, the left side port on the system. It'd be on the front side in the S and X models. If you have your files installed correctly, the offline system update button will light up like that. It'll he won't be grayed out anymore. So let me show you here. And there you go. So here's my USB stick here. Okay. So at this point, if the reset wasn't enough, you can then use this menu again to do the offline system update. And let me show you the process one more time. Now, if you have the USB flash drive with the OSU1 files on it already plugged in and 
you have a hard drive that's either blank because you just formatted it and you want to get it up and running again, you would do the same process, hold eject and the sync button and then press the power button for temp2. Like I said, it's easier on the S models because it has a real, the real buttons, not these touch sensitive buttons. There we go. Now we listen for the beep. Now it should actually beep twice in this case. And it's doing that because now this time, unlike before, we heard two beeps. And the second beep basically was informing us that it recognized a USB flash drive attached and it found valid files. If your OSU1 wasn't prepared correctly or you're using an OSU1 or OSU1 files that are older than the firmware of the console itself, you'd likely get an E102 error or E106 error or something like that. I think you get E106 if you don't have any update files on the system. And if it fails to see the OSU1 update on the flash drive, you get an E102. I might be wrong on that. And they're, they're always changing what the error codes represent. But um, from memory, that's I believe how it works. All right, so I think that should cover it. Uh, what's interesting about this is I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen because the uh, this system already had the latest update files on it. So I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do here. So I'll probably just let this record just for the sake of seeing what happens. Okay, I was curious to see what applying an OSU1 update to a working system, in fact, the same OSU1 version that was already on the system, and it went through the whole process and then just brought us back to the dashboard again. So uh, I guess that's what you would expect. But anyway, so there you go. So there's the process of holding the sync and eject buttons and using the troubleshoot menu to do an offline update. Uh, but as I mentioned, you could also use this method to do a reset as well. So I hope that'll help some people out, and I'll see you guys in my next video.